G'day, Jimmy here from Tom's Outdoors. Today we're gonna to go over Way to Safety 101. Way to Safety is something that's quite often overlooked when it comes to fly fishing. Uh, it is a very key and vital part of what we do, being in the water, and something that needs to be respected because water is cold, waders are difficult to be in, and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble very quickly. These are effectively concrete boots once you fill them up with water. So familiarizing yourself with what to do if that situation happens. Fingers crossed you never have to use this, uh, but knowledge is powerful and having an understanding of what to do if that situation arises can hopefully get you out of trouble and keep your head above water. One of the things that's commonly overlooked when it comes to way to safety is how you move your feet. Very commonly I see people that will walk as if they are walking on dry land. They are just moving their feet without any much thought to where it's going next. A really tried and true technique for wading is instead of picking up your foot and placing it down again, is to shuffle your foot along the bottom until you have a solid footing from there Move the next one, shuffle it along again until you've got a solid ground. Here we've got some nice grippy rocks and in these boots I have some studs. River stones are quite often round and they've got a slime on them. They can be extremely slippery and making it really difficult to walk. So you have to take a lot of care and pay a lot of attention to where each individual footstep is going in order not to lose your balance. In a river compared to a lake, you have got the water current pushing down onto your leg. With each step that you pick up, your leg wants to get pulled backwards. Instead of allowing that to happen, keeping your foot low and shuffling to the bottom or making sure you've got a nice solid footing, you can then slide your next foot forward again onto there. Here we're on Blowering Dam, it's a very controlled environment, very safe for me to do this and show you. I'm going to take my feet off the ledge here and I'm going to very gently slide each foot paying attention to where it's going next until I have a nice solid sure foot, yep that's good, I'm going to pick it up and move along again. Standing on a lake shore uh, as opposed to being in a river, I don't have the water coming down at me, so it's a little bit more easy compared to a river, but it's still something to very much pay attention to. On a lake shore, you have boulders, uh, bog holes, old fire pits if you're in an old camping area. A lot of the lakes are flooded at the moment. Stepping off the edge of ledges here, just a couple of meters to the side is very deep. Oh, I don't want to go there. So I'm taking my time shuffling each individual foot, making sure that I've got a sure footing, picking it up and moving the next one across. You can see here, I've added studs to these boots of mine. A couple of them have been torn out through a lot of wading. These can be a great advantage to have if you're predominantly spending your time on uneven surfaces or slippery river rocks. As an alternative, you can use a stickier compound rubber or some brands even do an aluminium bar that comes directly across, which provide fantastic grip. Something to bear in mind is fishing with a buddy. When fishing in a new location or a section of river that you've not been before, it's gonna be a really good idea to take a friend with you. Not only is it good for a bit of company, but it's great for safety. Reasons for that being, if you get yourself in strife or if they get themselves in trouble, you can assist each other. Not only that, you can actually raise the alarm. Quite often we've got our phones sitting sometimes in the not so waterproof part of our waders, sometimes in the waterproof part. The alarm can be raised, a phone call can be made if there is reception, an EPIRB can be set off and help can come to you. Having a quality set of Polaroids is not only an advantage for spotting the fish, it's a great tool to use while you're waiting. It can help us to see where our next footstep's going to. Looking down, your depth of perception for how deep it is, what the rock size is, can be distorted without. Having a good set of sunnies really, really helps not only protect your eyes, but to look where, they're, where your feet are gonna go next. Spending the money on a quality set of sunglasses, putting a strap on them so that you won't lose them in the water. If you drop them, that is probably the second most important part for having 
quality set of eyewear is to have a quality strap so that you do not lose them. One of the most key and vital parts of putting your waders on is to have your wading belt done up nice and tight. This part here will aid to trap air if you go over in the water. That part is really, really key. If I don't have this done up, effectively my waders will flood with water very quickly, not trap any air, and I'll be in a lot of trouble very, very fast. And now I'm gonna go through uh, a couple of the procedures that you wanna do if you flood your waders or step off a ledge. Um, you wanna do them quite quickly and you wanna do it with confidence. It is a key part to staying upright and getting yourself back to shore. Uh, we've come down to a boat ramp today on a lake. It is a very controlled environment, although the water temperature is around 14 degrees. Uh, it is much safer for me to demonstrate this here now than on a river. I'm gonna use this wet line here along the boat ramp as a demonstration for here being dry and here being above my waders, okay? So what I'm gonna do, as soon as I take that step, it might be because you misjudge the depth of a ledge, it might be murky water. As soon as I take that step off and I'm realizing I'm going over, I'm gonna to wanna to bring my knees to my chest. What that's going to do is trap a pocket of air inside here, helped by my wading belt. That is gonna look like this. Knees to the chest. From there, I'm gonna keep that and I'm going to do a back stroke, a back skull, until I get back to a shallow enough water where I can put my feet down with confidence and stand upright. What I don't wanna do is put my legs out straight. What that will do is fill my waders up. I will sink deep in the water, fill my waders up, and I'll show a demonstration of what happens after with a full wader of water, it becomes very, very, very difficult to maneuver safely. I'm not recommending for everybody to go out and jump in the river or in a lake, but if you have a nice, safe, controlled environment with someone watching, give it a try out, jump in the water with them on, go through the processes, see what happens. Make sure it's in a controlled environment though. I can't stress that enough. If you're around an area that has a way to safety training course, jump on it, give it a go. It's something that I did at a very young age and couldn't recommend it more. I'm gonna do my demonstration here on the edge of the boat ramp. I have a very, very, very defined line across here. So waist deep where I'm gonna step off the edge where it's gonna to drop to potentially over my head. From there, as soon as I go off the edge, I'm gonna bring my knees to my chest, trapping the air. I'm gonna do the backstroke. I'm gonna bring myself back to the shore where I can stand up, and then I'm gonna walk away out. And, oh, actually, am I doing this? Waiter belt, check, done up tight, waiters up nice and high, locked in, as if I am walking along the edge of a riverbank. Okay, we're gonna meander out. Maybe we made a mistake, all of a sudden, we're out off the edge, knees up to the chest, floating, back to the shoreline, feet down, and we're up. So now I'm gonna do a demonstration of what happens if you don't have your waders done up nice and tight and you don't have your belt on. I don't recommend to do this when you're standing out in the river but in this controlled environment here, I can demonstrate it very easily. So I'm gonna loosen up all of my tabs so my waders are nice and big. They're gonna take on the maximum water. Okay, from here, it shouldn't take very long as soon as I get out of the edge. All right, it's filled up, I can fill them. Oh, that's really difficult. I can hardly kick my legs, they feel very heavy. There's the bottom. There we go. That was a lot more difficult. And now my waders are completely full of water. That is not what I recommend. Not good.
I've got to do one key part. Something that we're going to have in our hands is a fly rod. Yeah, look at fishing. That's the key part. Maybe you're not fishing. Maybe you were fishing. That's why you weren't paying attention. When you go out off the edge, get rid of the fly rod. You can't swim with a fly rod in your hand. You can buy a new fly rod, but you can't buy a new light. Safety first. All right, I'm done now. We done? I hope you're able to take something away from this. Remember always wear your wading belt. Make sure it's done up nice and tight, even though it might be uncomfortable. So I am gonna get changed, get dry, and get back. Cheers.